Also, a big thank you to those who uh, helped in any way with uh, the contributions towards the Ukraine appeal. Uh, you'll see this is uh, the, the, the amount that was collected. Uh, you, so that will be going um, to Swindon and then on from Swindon to Ukraine. Um, just a reminder also that loose collection uh, during Lent is going towards the Kind Fund. Uh, GFS and CLB will be uh, on Monday from quarter to seven to quarter to eight. Uh, then choir practice uh, was on Tuesday at half past eight. Uh, Bible study on Wednesday at quarter to eight in the committee room. And then our morning service uh, uh, will be looking at straining towards what is ahead, and that's at 11 o'clock. Children will go directly to uh, Sunday school, and that will be 10 to 11 on Facebook, and then uh, later on in the afternoon, it'll be on YouTube. If you have any items for the food bank, then if you can bring those along either to the church or directly, and we'll make sure that they get to Enniskillen. So since this is uh, Mothering Sunday, uh, there's a, a short video that traces mothers in the Bible. Motherhood plays an important role in the Bible. It binds the beginning and the end. These stories offer us a glimpse into the heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her. Ten years pass and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons. Yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, For where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. So we stand and we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts, help us to pray, and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. And begin our service by singing, singing Now Thank We All Our God.
So we confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in unison of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the colic for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Amanda is going to read our reading. A reading from Psalm 127, beginning at verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. This is the word of the Lord. And before the all age talk, uh, we stand and we sing all that I am and to be in your presence.
Let's pray. Father, I pray that you take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your namesake and for your glory. Amen. Now, I wonder if I was to ask you to put your hands up and then put it down if I'd say, they then say um, that a certain distance that you've traveled and you haven't traveled that distance. Okay, so hands up if you've traveled more than a mile. Okay, keep your hands up if you've traveled more than two miles, more than three, more than four. This is to come to the service. More than five. <laughs> I know how far you've traveled, and it's definitely a lot more than five. More than 10. More than 20. More than 30. Is it more than 30 miles from Uma? More than, more than 40. More than 50. More than 60. You're trying to work out now how far, far is it from Dundonald? It's 81 miles according to Google. So you've, that's how far you've come. Okay, so now when we look at this passage, we have to realize that there was a lot of traveling that was happening as people would sing this psalm. So, so the traveling that would have happened, if you look from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, uh, you'll see at the top of them, it talks about songs of ascent. So all of the, the psalms between Psalm 120 and Psalm 134, they would have sang these songs as they traveled. Now, I don't know how many of you, as you traveled the distance to here, you walked. Probably not. Most of us drive. But we need to remember that in Bible times, people walked, and they walked a long distance. For if you look at uh, uh, Joseph and Mary and them going up to Jerusalem, and we read that they went up each year, every year they went up to celebrate the feast. There were th three feasts each year that God said, all the men are to appear before me three times a year. Now, that doesn't mean to say that men were to go to church three times a year. It meant that they had to travel a distance to Jerusalem. So for Mary and Joseph and Jesus, they had to travel 90 miles in order to go to Jerusalem. So you're talking about a five-day journey in order to go to Jerusalem for a feast that would last as much as a week-long feast a week-long feast, and then have to travel back. What was that all about? Well, I believe that it was all about time. And when we look at the Bible, we see that time and time again, that God wants us to spend time with Him and time with others who also worship Him. So we would have a bigness of God. So we'd recognize that we're not alone that there are others who worship and serve God too. You can imagine as they traveled along those journeys that they would talk about the stories of what God had done in the past, because that's what we read in the Scriptures, don't we? That those who were parents were meant to teach their children about what God had done in the past. Talk to them on the road as you walk. That would have been when they were walking up to Jerusalem. They would have been talking about the stories of what God has done in the past. But hopefully they would also be talking about what God is doing in their present. And they would also be looking to the future of what they believe God would do. That time was a time to get reorganized. They would spend time saying thanks to God reminding themselves about what God has done so that then they would trust God for what He would do. You see, in Psalm 127, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, those who stand guard, stand guard in vain. 
In vain you rise early, stay up late, working for food, toiling for food. But the Lord gives rest to those he loves. They were reminding themselves that there was a danger that when we could be ending up the things that, like shelter, a home, and if you look at that word, unless the Lord builds the house, that word can actually mean a family too. If God is not number one in our lives, if we're trying to build our family, our house, if we're trying to work, whatever we're trying to do, if it's about security, unless the Lord watches over the city, all the things that we worry about and concerned about, if we don't put God first, then whatever we do, it's in vain. And it certainly doesn't have an eternal value. And so, as they were going up to Jerusalem on this hill of ascent, the songs of ascent, they would sing songs that reminded them about what it was all about. And every year, they would do that three times in a year, as well as going to the synagogue and worshiping God on a Sabbath. And we need to get back time and take time to think about what God has done, what He is doing, and what He will do, so that we would thank Him, but we'd also trust Him. And a way of showing that we trust Him is by doing certain things. So, when it comes to, even though we know that we may work for a living and we earn uh, food for our table, when we say the grace at table, I don't know how many of you st still do that, but saying grace, giving thanks to God for what's on our table, it's a sign of trust that we're believing that, yes, even though we work for things, everything comes from Him, and we thank Him, and we trust Him. And that's bringing God into every little part of our life. And that's what that psalm is all about. It's bringing God into every little part of our life. It's understanding that it's a partnership. Yes, we need to do our part. We need to work. But we also need to recognize that God, we need to let Him do His part. That our work should be a part of worship. Everything that we do should be a part of our worship of Him. And when we do that, then it will not be in vain. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, uh, you stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. When God is there, number one, as Jesus said, you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, before He said that, He talked about the pagans run after all these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So then he says, but seek first his kingdom and all these things. So you see, we can chase after all the things, or we can chase after God, and all these things will be given to us as well. I pray that we'll be those who take time, time to be with God, time to come together and have that bigness of, of God's family, that we'll thank Him for things in our lives, and that we'll trust Him for what He can and wants to do in and through us. Let's pray. Father, we do want to pray that You would help us, that, Lord, forgive us for those times when, Lord, we rush, we rush around and we don't take time to think about you, to allow you to speak into our lives through your word and in other ways. Lord, we pray that you'd help us today, on this day, that we would truly take a Sabbath rest, that we would rest in you, that we'd take time together as individuals and as families, that you would be at the center. So, Lord, you build us as a family, not just as a family 
uh, of our blood family, our relations, but Lord, that you would build us as a family of believers too. We ask this in your name. Amen. We sing all I once held dear. standing and we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
And we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we lift to you all those you have called as pastors and evangelists who shared your word and the gospel of your Son in dark and difficult circumstances, who build up believers and bring others to the joy of salvation. We ask that the Holy Spirit will attend them, giving their words power and sustaining their faith in spite of the troubles and dangers they face. Please continue to work mightily through the ministry of your servants, extending a kingdom that will never be destroyed, but will endure forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow and for mothers who have lost children in this terrible war, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them and for mothers living as refugees with their children that they would know your strength and provision. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace, especially remembering the Moore family. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. Father, we pray for the church worldwide, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is I Need Thee Every Hour.
So we have our closing prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. Let us say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We turn to one another, we say the grace together. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So every blessing, uh, please be seated uh, and Lorna and Beatrice are going to play us out.